Welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video, I'll be giving you an introduction to React Navigation 5. It's not officially announced yet, but there is an alpha version that's out there. So up until React Navigation 4, there were quite a few changes that had taken place. The last one was that the navigators were decoupled in order to reduce the bundle size and you could install only the navigators that you required. However, looking here on the left, you can see that the React Navigation 4 API was a static API. That is, you had to create your navigators on one particular screen and configuring them dynamically was not possible. However, in React Navigation 5, this has been changed. We now have a component-based API which lets you create your navigators just like you would create any other component. And this enables us to change the configuration of our navigators dynamically. So let's go ahead and install React Navigation 5. And as we build out our navigators, let's try and see what the changes are. So here in front of me, I've created an empty React Native project with Expo, and I'm running it on my iPhone 11 simulator. The first thing is to go ahead and install React Navigation version 5. So here, if we have a look at the documentation, you can head over to the next version of React Navigation, and you can copy out this line over here. So I'm just going to open up my terminal in Visual Studio Code and paste that line here. Once we have that installed, let's come back to our app.js. And here on top, unlike React Navigation 4, where we had to import the app container, we'll import something known as the Navigation Native Container. From at React Navigation forward slash native. Now here in our default app function, let's get rid of this view and let's pass in navigation native container. And obviously in our simulator as of now, we see nothing there. Now inside our navigation native container is where all our navigators exist. So let's go ahead and create our first stack navigator. If you have a look at the documentation here again, see here, let's go to the stack navigators page and to install the navigator, let's copy this out back to our terminal and let's paste that in. Once that is installed, if you're using Expo, you also need to go ahead and install these other dependencies. Let's paste that in again. And now we're good to go. Let's now create our first stack navigator. For that here, we'll import create stack navigator from React Navigation forward slash stack. I'm just going to create a new function here. And let's call that home screen. All it does is return the text home screen centered on the screen. Now we'll create a stack navigator by saying const stack, which will equal to create stack navigator. Inside our function app, let's pass in our stack navigator. The way we do that is by saying stack dot navigator. This creates our navigator. And now we have to pass in screens. So we'll say stack.screen. We'll create a name for that screen. Let's call that home. And we have to pass in a component for that screen, which in our case will be the home screen. Let's close that out and save this. And as you can see, we get the home screen text and we get the header of the stack navigator. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this home screen. Let's call that setting screen. And let's pass in another stack screen. So here we'll say stack.screen. The name will be settings and the component points to will be the settings screen. Now in our home screen, we can just create a new button. For that, we'll import in button from React Native. Pass that in below the text. Let's give it a title which says go to settings screen. And in this, we'll pass in on press within which we can use navigation dot navigate and point to our settings screen. So the name we had passed into the settings screen was settings. So that's what we need over here. Let's save that. If you click on go to settings screen, we get that navigation is not available. That's because we need to pass in navigation here. So let's replace the props with navigation, save that out and try that again. And we see that works. Now, unlike earlier, when we had to declare 
all the configuration of the particular stack on one screen, we can just configure our stack navigator right here. So suppose for this particular screen, you want to change the options and change the title to my home screen and save that out, we'll notice that the title gets updated. Similarly here, we can just pass in initial route name and change the route to settings as the initial route. So it's very similar to just passing props to a component in React Native. Now due to this component type layout, we can also dynamically update the properties of a particular screen or a navigator. So suppose here on this button, instead of navigating to the settings screen, we want to update the title of the home screen. We can just call this method called set options. And here we can update the title to say updated. Now we save the app. Let's change the initial route again to home screen. Now if we click go to settings screen you'll see that the title got updated. This is something which was not possible earlier. Let's just change this back to the navigation. Similarly, another cool thing you can do is, you can update the page by clicking a button on the header. This could actually be achieved earlier, but we would have to mess with the navigation params. Now, however, we don't need to do that. So let's try that out. I'm just gonna change this home screen into curly braces. Pass a return statement here. Make sure everything is working. And then we'll use navigation.setOptions. Inside this, let's set up our header right, in which we want to pass in a button. Let's set the title as save. We'll pass an on press in it. So once the save is complete, we can just replace out this home screen for the home screen again with the updated data. So we can say navigation dot replace home. Let's save that. So now you see you have a save button here. You might be making some changes here. You can then save the changes here. And then once that's done, you can replace the home screen. So once you click save, you see you get a new version of the home screen with your updated data. Another thing in React Navigation 5 is that it provides us some hooks in its public API. So one of the interesting hooks is called uses focused. So let's just test that out. Here we can import that in by saying use is focused from react navigation forward slash core. Let's just set up the settings screen to have curly braces as well. And here I can set up a constant called is focused and set that to use is focused, which will get us the current state of the screen. So depending on the screen is focused, we can display different content, but here we'll just change the style and change the color. If is focused is true, then we'll just make it green. Otherwise we'll leave it as black. Now, when you go to the settings screen, you see that the color has updated. Just like use is focused, we have a couple of other hooks like use navigation, use route, use focus effect, and use scroll to top available. So that was just a quick intro into React Navigation version five. I hope you guys like this video and try this out. And as always, thank you for watching.